My name's Kate Biggs, I'm a Conservation Officer with Gloucester City Council and uh, this morning we're out at St Oswald's Priory uh, to look at some of the conservation works that have been funded by the Cultural Recovery Fund from Historic England and uh, the Government. So the Cultural Recovery Fund is a sum of money that's been made available following uh, the Covid-19 epidemic to help with some of the repairs that have been needed to some of our historic monuments. St Oswald's Priory is very important to Gloucester's history, having been um, requested to be built by Ethelflaed, um, Queen Ethelflaed, and um, is one of the earliest religious buildings within the city. What we have behind us are the remaining arcades of the um, inside of the church and gradually over time monuments such as this uh, need repair and maintenance and ongoing care. The costs of this are pretty hefty and not something that um, Gloucester City Council as owner of the site can readily put its hand in its pocket to pay for. And the Cultural Recovery Fund, as a grant from Historic England, has made available a sum of money to help with the costs of doing those very necessary repairs and maintenance that have um, been, um, we've been unable to do in the last few years. So, standing remains, standing monuments, they always have an ongoing need for repair and maintenance. The sort of ravages of acid rain, wind, constant um, graffiti um, so on, does have an effect on the masonry. So if you imagine that the soft limestone that some of these buildings are, are built of and constructed of is a bit like a sponge, it soaks up water and then when we get warm dry weather it allows that water to evaporate off. And what you have to do is control the amount of water that saturates into the stone. If we have a very heavy frost, the water inside the stone that, that the, water, the stone has absorbed can expand and contract, just like it does in a flower pot or something like that. And what that means is that sometimes it makes the stone spall off. So you get like fracturing of the outside layers, which means that, that, that that sort of decompose and, and become soft and, and exfoliate. And what we're trying to do here is slow that process down. So the turf topping on the wall, the green turf that we've put on the top of the wall, helps to soak up some of the rain when it rains and slow the process of that deterioration down. A historic monument is a bit like a bar of soap. We keep on washing it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You, can't you cannot prevent deterioration over time. You can't stop the, the sort of ravages of wind and rain, but you can slow it down. And the contractors that we've got working on site at the moment are expert in undertaking conservation repairs. They're putting on shelter coats and they're pinning various bits of masonry where it's unstable. And then the green turf on the top, hopefully will regenerate and enable that um, sort of absorption of, of moisture and, and evaporation of moisture on warmer days, which will slow the amount of water that gets into the wall and causes that deterioration. My name is Jake Etherton. I work, I'm the director of Jay Etherton Building Conservation and I'm working at St Oswald's Priory doing conservation works and turf capping. Um, the first thing that we do when we're on site is to put in water samples, uh, i.e. here, here and here, and also some shelter coats, which is a protected um, lining for, for the stone, which is in here and here and a bit down the bottom there. Um, so what does that do? That um, protects the stone. It's only sort of like a very thin wash, but it just gives the stone a little bit of protection over the years. It doesn't last forever, but it it will hold 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 deterioration back a bit. We have to do certain amount of samples 
due to the fact of of there is quite a lot of colour variations in the in the stonework itself. So um, and different types of pointing. So we do um, five or six samples to suit the building. In various places on the building, we will do a sort of a conservation tile repair, which is this here. This is just a sample. And these are yellow gault tiles, well, gault tiles from um, Bulmer Brick. Mm. And they sort of like sit back. If you used a red tile, it would be a little bit too strong in colour. And uh, we just build it up. So, because we don't know what the stone was, so we just put that in to sort of like protect it a bit and sort of like hold things up. To sort of stabilise it? Yes. And with the building, obviously, there's different types of stone. So here we have a forest stone here and it's been shelter coated in the green colour that is more suitable for it. Up here it's sort of more irony and there's a sort of like a more orangey coloured shelter coat and down here is even more irony and you've got uh, more a, an orangey shelter coat mm. which is again just to protect the stone. Yeah. And these are um, stainless steel um, threaded dowels that we're using to pin the stone back together with. They're fixed in with a lime mortar so that's um, rather than a resin, so it's all a bit reversible. And these would just hold the fragments back into place um, because there has been a lot of bits falling off of this, especially in recent months due to the frost that we've had and the amount of rain that we've had and then the frost and stuff. And it, it, bits were falling off it left, right and centre. And it's for public safety that we're putting all this back and making it safe for them, for the public. These will all get covered in um, with a little bit of mortar at the end um, so you will not see any pins sticking out whatsoever and it'll just look like it's just still the ruin it is. Well here's a crack in the stone here and what we will do is it's probably too delicate to pin it but we can put a mortar fillet over the top of it, clean it off a bit and shelter coat it in, in just in this area. Uh, likewise here we can fill this void in here and then again cap it off with mortar just to stop the rain and stuff get it, rain and weather getting into it also in any little voids we could we, we will point up and there's a biggish void there which we may be able to get a bit of tile in and stuff and point that right out full so the turf is taken from the grounds of the monument which is just over there because local turf is lasts a bit longer on the top of the wall if you buy it from the shop it won't be as good and it won't have the natural seeds in it and all sorts of stuff that is used to this climate. So uh, we store it here, keep it in the shade and we keep it nice and damp throughout the day before we apply it onto the wall. So what we do with the turf when we're laying it, we hang it over the wall and then um, we put topsoil into it, wet it all up and then we hold it back into and make a sort of like what you call a sort of like a fig roll with it yeah. <laughs> and then we spike it with bamboo to hold it into place and it stops it coming off the wall. Any particular reason you use bamboo? Well it will rot down eventually and then you, it w won't be seen so yeah so that's the reason for using the bamboo and you put a couple in each piece and maybe a bit at the back one at the back just to hold it all into place. So are you going to be doing that over the whole? Yes we will be going all the way across the wall. Yeah. Do you have to make it even or you, yeah. No, it'll undulate, it it'll go with the wall head. So obviously if there's a few stones which are a little bit high in the centre, you could take those off just to give you a little bit more of a flatter space to work on. But in general, you would just work across the top of the wall. And the reason for putting the turf on top of the wall is to protect the head, to stop the moisture going into the top of the wall and then making it all soak down in and then start to create problems with frost damage, which we've seen this yeah. year already. So um, it gives it a nice warm blanket and also it makes the water disperse off a lot, lot better yeah. rather than just coming off at points, it will just ease its way down through. So this was some previous turfing that they put in, I think it was 10 to 15 years ago. And you can see how we've got different types of grasses in it now and different types of weeds and stuff. It has gone a little bit loose on, on the, on the soil but uh, and it should really in a way cover the side of the of the stone but it's still doing a job with this type of weed if we think it's non-invasive i.e it's not going to have a huge root system and 
create more damage to the monument, we will probably keep keep them in um, because they do a little bit of holding and they do take away a bit of moisture. So the reason for it, if you do see weeds on this, it isn't that we haven't taken them out. Well, we haven't taken them out due to the fact that they're not going to be evasive to the monument.